Okay, good evening, pre-calc 11s. Now, you should be listening to this Monday evening. So, my assumption is that you've all done your test today, and I hope it all really went well for each and every one of you. Uh, at this point then, tomorrow, you're going to be starting a new chapter, and it's going to have to do with, just like the title here, Quadratic Functions and Transformations. So this is going to be somewhat stuff that you've already known about. But at the same time, it's also going to be looking at it in a very different way that will be new to you. So in one respect, you're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I know that stuff. But the other time, we're going to be using some new words. And there's a good reason why we're doing it uh, and the way we are. It's going to make things a hell of a lot easier for you when you start doing uh, more complex functions other than the quadratic one. And also uh, when you start doing some really crazy stuff, when you start doing your pre-calculus 12 next year. So with that in mind, uh, let's take a look at what we're talking about. I am pretty sure that all of you have heard of quadratic functions at this point, and you normally see them as your typical uh, a times x squared plus bx plus c. And uh, that's one way of looking at it, but what we're going to look at now is how you can take what we call the root function and transform it. So there's two words there. Let's talk about both of them. Now, what are transformations? Transformations are where you take a function, and it doesn't have to be quadratic, it could be anything, but you take that function and you do something to it. Now, you can either, there's really only kind of three main things you can do. It gets a little more complex later, but basically what we're looking at it is either, let me see, I'm just going to write it down. You can either do what's called uh, translations and uh, you can do compressions uh, there's two ways of looking at this these are compressions or expansions and they're sort of the same thing but in different directions and then you have reflections and those are the the three big ones that we're going to be looking at now I'm not going to exactly get into what each one of those are right now we're going to be looking at them as we go along in this video and uh, the main reason is that you're going to be looking at this stuff on a worksheet tomorrow and I want to make sure you don't go in on that stuff not knowing anything so hopefully this video is going to really help you out in fact I'd probably uh, bring it along with yourself for school tomorrow so in case you want to refer back to it maybe it'll help you at that time so a transformation is something where you make a change to the root function now what is the root function uh, right here this is the root function this is basically the simplest most basic version of a quadratic function a quadratic function is nothing more than you have a variable and its highest power is 2 x squared so it's not x squared plus something x plus c you take all those away and all you're left with is y equals x squared that's the simplest version of that function and what does it look like well you actually know what it looks like if I take my set of values down here and this is what we usually do we usually find out what is the typical points for the root function from negative three, uh, from an x value of negative three to an x value of three. And you can see I've already done it there for you. Yeah, negative three squared is nine. Negative two squared is four. Negative one squared is one, and on and on and on. And I'm left with a few points, and I've already graphed them over here, given it to you in blue exactly the shape. And you know what a shape of a quadratic is. It's a parabola, and it faces upwards. There's a few things we notice. It's it looks like it's almost a mirror image along the y-axis here it looks exactly the same on both sides the same y values just simply one is in the negative direction and one is the positive direction of x but it has a typical shape now the question is is what do the transformations that we can do to this thing uh, what does that do to that original shape on a graph and what we're always going to be talking about when you look at these is where I put that transformation, where I put the numbers, when I add something to this root function, where those transformations are located tells me something about what kind of a shift or, or a stretch or, or a movement 
it's going to be in. And a lot of it has to do whether it's inside or outside the function. Now, that might not be altogether clear what that means right now. But let's just say for now on that uh, a function, the function right now is x squared. So if I do anything inside x squared, that would be considered horizontal. And if it's outside, it's vertical. What does that mean? You don't know yet. Let's go through a few changes and then we'll see if this starts to make some sense. So I'm going to look at the first one. We're going to call this y1. We're going to say this uh, transformation, I'm just going to simply put a 2 in front of the x squared. So it's 2 times multiplying x squared by 2. Okay, so why am I doing that? Let's see. Get, uh, another line. I'm going to put another line here. Let's just put it right down here. Nice line. That's a good line. I'm back to my reds, and I'm looking at y1. Now notice what I'm doing. I am not touching my original x values. I'm just finding what the new y values are when I put the 2 here. And there's a reason for this. My 2 is considered to be outside the function. It's, it's outside of x squared. I could almost write this if I wanted to to say it's 2 outside of the x squared. I put the x squared in brackets. It's outside of it. It's the same thing I'm doing here. So that is where I change the things vertically. And when I say I'm doing something vertically, I'm talking about the y values. Horizontals are the x values, y values are the verticals. So let's look at what's going to happen. I'm going to be multiplying my x's that are squared. Okay, so negative 3 squared, that's 9, but now I'm multiplying by 2. So I could almost say that I'm going to double all the things in the y column. That's all I'm really going to be doing. So I got 9 times 2. 18. Negative 2 squared is 4 and times 2 is 8. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 2. 2. You're kind of getting the idea of what this is going to look like. And the nice thing about parabolas, well, it's pretty well going to be the same values mimicked on the other side. So once again, 1, one squared is 1 times 2 is 2. 8. 18. So what does this look like? What does this look like? Okay, let's take a look. So I'm going to look at this. Negative 3, uh, 18. I'm not going to be able to do that. I can only up go as high as 11 here in my y. So that's not real. I'm not going to be able to do that. One. But the next one I can. Negative 2 and 8. Stick that right there. There we go. Negative 1 and 2. 0 is still 0. So the vertex stays exactly where it is. The next one. 2 and 8 again. So what does that look like? Let's just draw that now for a sec. See if I can't get a good curve here. See how good I am at drawing here with this little new pad of mine. And close enough. Okay, so I'm just going to label this here so we know what we're looking at here. This is y1. If I was going to be careful about this, i got to make sure that we remember the blue is my original graph, my original, so I'll even put a little subscript zero, just simply say it's the original graph. And so what happened to the new one? Well, it seems like it kind of squeezed in, but another way of looking at it, and this is the way I want you to look at it, is that it's been stretched upwards. It's basically, I took the blue one and I stretched it this way up in the uh, positive y direction. It got skinnier as a result. But basically what's happening here, and we're just going to write it down, this is more or less what we call, and this is probably a new word for you, but it's a vertical, a vertical expansion. So I've expanded the function, expanded the graph in the positive y direction. Okay, so let's take a look at a different one now. We're going to look at uh, a new y, y2. And in this case, I'm not going to do a, um, a large number. I'm going to do a smaller number. And, uh, and, and specifically, I'm doing a number that's less than 1. And you'll notice that with expansions and compressions, it matters whether or not the number is above 1 or below 1. So let's look at 1 half x squared. And once again, that one half, it's 
outside the function. It's outside the function. And outside of the function means I am looking at a vertical something. It's going to be vertical. So that means if it's vertical, I'm going to be changing my y values only. Once again, leaving those x's alone. It's the origin, it's the same x's for this one again. Now, let's see, what do we got here? Hold on now. I'm going to have to erase that for a second. And let me get that table going here. I need another column. Lovely. And now I got a Y2. So we're going to go back to my original two coordinates. What happens to them? Well, the Y's stay the same. I'm sorry, the X's stay the same. The Y's now, I am basically looking at x squared, negative 3 squared, that gives me the 9, but now half, it's multiplied by half, so I'm halving all my original y values, so what, what does that look like, let's see now, that will be uh, half of 9, 4.5, half of 4, that's 2, half of 1, that's 1 half, or 0 0.5, half of zero. The zero stays the same. You'll notice that even when I'm doing these expansions or compressions or anything like that, when I'm stretching it, um, the actual graph doesn't move around. It's, it's getting fatter or skinnier, but it doesn't actually uh, move. It stays exactly where it is. So same values on the other side, just as I thought they would be. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, negative three, negative three, is 4.5 right there. Negative 2 is 2 right there. So we're beginning to get an idea about what's going to happen here. I bet you already know. Here, I'm going to draw it just so that we're totally clear on what's happening. And voila. So what do I got here? I got a y2. And what's happened to it? It's been, it's as if, if you want to look at this, I'm compressed, it's a vertical compression. This is the word we use, vertical compression. And in this case, what I've done, it's as if I've taken the blue, the original root graph, and I've squished it down, so it's actually become kind of fatter now as a result. But think of it in terms of being squished in the vertical direction. So that's a vertical compression. So we have this idea, there's this kind of rule there of like if I see a number here and if it's bigger than one or if it's less than one, something different is going to happen to it. And we're starting to get an idea about the rules involved for each of these. Let's look at one other one. I'm going to paint this green, green right now, but Y3. What happens if it's negative? And you probably already know what happens because you have seen if the a value, remember from when you did quadratics, if the a is negative, you already know what that means. But let's just do this, well, in the way I'm asking you to. It's a negative one. It's as if I'm multiplying by negative one. And I don't really need to say that here. I'm just going to erase that. And let's take another, let's take our new graph. But it is outside the function, just like the other ones. So I am still only changing the y values. The y values are the only ones that are changing. So what happens here? What does the negative do? Well, the negative is going to change every one of my y values by multiplying by negative 1. So I'll have an x value of negative 3, but then my 9 multiplied by negative 1. What do I get? Okay, I get a negative 9, negative 4, negative 1, Zero, zero doesn't change. So, once again, I'm not moving it, really. I'm simply changing the shape, in a sense. But, okay, let's see what happens. Negative four, negative nine. Okay, what does that look like? Well, I'm sure you already know. Let's go through it, just to make sure we understand. Okay, negative three is going to be negative, where is this? Did I get the right spot? I better count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Really? It's negative 9? I didn't think it was. Okay. Maybe I counted wrong. Negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 1. 
zero. Okay, vertex still on the same spot. It's interesting. And then same spots again. So what happened? It's obvious what happened to it. And you already know this because of what you did last year. But now what we're talking, we're going to describe it a little differently. It got flipped. It got flipped. And what do we call that? We're calling this a vertical. And we have to call it vertical. It's outside the function. A vertical reflection. That's what we call it. It's a reflection. It's a reflection. And if I want to be specific, that when I say it's a vertical reflection, I'm saying across the x-axis. Flips like so. Right across that x-axis like that. So we got a new rule. If I got a negative, I will be doing a vertical reflection. And I can easily just take my root coordinates and change my y value by multiplying by negative 1. And I'm done. Really nice and simple. Okay, but at this point, we've stretched them, we've, we've compressed, we've expanded them, and we've reflected them. But we haven't moved them around very much. And uh, what I want to do is start seeing well, what's involved with... Uh, Basically, what would be involved for us? What else do I got to erase here? Nothing. If I wanted to learn how to shift this thing. Oh, there we go. Get rid of him. Where's this guy located? Did I miss him? Yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to clear this off. And then let's... Well, where is him? Is he hiding? There we go. I have a bunch of layers right now, guys, and I'm not finding everything properly. Okay, so I want to look at a new transformation, and in this case, we'll call this Y4. It's going to be a little different. Color this uh, purple. Why not? So Y4 equals, in this case, I'm going to say X squared plus 4. Once again, the plus 4 is outside the function. It's, it's, it's not inside. I haven't replaced my x or anything. I haven't put it inside the x squared. It's still looked at as, I could still look at it as being a brackets x squared. There's my function. And then there's my plus 4 outside of it. So I know that this is going to be another vertical thing. But what kind of vertical thing? Well, let's see what happens. It's outside. It's vertical. And I'm going to simply adjust my y's. X's stay the same. Y's now. I'm adding 4. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I should, uh, I should draw the next column there. Let's do that. Perfect. Okay. Okay, what do we got? 9 plus 4, 13. 4 plus 4, 8. 1 plus 4, 5. 4, negative... One, wait a minute, sorry. 1 plus 4, 5. Almost made a mistake there. 8, 13. What does that look like? Okay. So we're not sure. Let's just find out what happens. So uh, can't do can't do negative 3 because it's too high. And why at 13? Can't do that. So let's start at negative 2. Negative 2 is 8. So that's right there. Negative 1 is 5. 0 is 5. 4, then 5, then 8, and what do we got? So what's happened? Well, it might not be entirely obvious, but the, the graph itself has not been made skinnier or fat or anything. It's just simply been moved. It's been shifted. And what we call this is a vertical translation plus 4. So it's plus 4. In other words, we've gone up. We've gone up 4. And the easiest way of finding out what's going on is you can look at the vertex. Because if you think about it, the vertex has only basically done exactly what it's telling you to do. It's 0. 0 plus 4 gives you 4. So you know that you've gone from 0, 0 to 0, 4. And you can see it's just simply to shift up. And that's all that we're doing. Now let's get a little trickier now. So I want to see, and this is this is probably going to be more or less the last thing we're going to do before we look at, um, well, a little bit of a trickier thing, but here we go. Y5. 
All this time, I've done verticals. I've done, well, what if we take this thing and we put something outside of the function? So why don't we try it and where we put it inside the function? Inside the function. So I'm going to put it inside. In other words, inside the bracket. So my x is now going to be replaced, basically. It's as if I've replaced the x. So it's x minus 2 squared. What, what does that look like? Okay, so you may have guessed what's going to happen here. First off, I know this is a horizontal transformation. So I'm not going to be changing my y in this case. I'm going to be changing my x's because anytime I do anything horizontally, I am then going to be altering the x value instead of the y value. So in this case, the y values stay the same. The x values now change in my root graph. So the question is, is it negative 2? Now, you could go through a whole bunch of table of values and find this out for yourself. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm going to give you the answer here already. This is x5. So I'm changing the x. I'm changing, I'm taking this, these x values, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. And I'm adding the 2. I'm not subtracting. I'm adding the 2. And this is one of the little tricks that we have to just simply remember. If it's a horizontal translation, it's the opposite sign. So I'm not saying negative 3 minus 2, it's negative 3 plus 2. So I get negative 1, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 0 plus 2 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3, sorry, 2 plus 2 is 4. And 3 plus 2 is 5. So what does this look like? Now I'm using x's in this column and the original y's. So let's go through it. At negative 1, negative 1, it is 9 right there. 0 is 4. 4 right there. 1 is 1. 2 is 0. 3 is 1. 4 is... what is 4? Four? 4 is 4. And then 5 should be 9. Let's take a look at that. Yep, okay, I kind of missed a few there, but you get the idea. So remember, we're looking at the original blue graph and seeing what happened to it. And you could even look by the, the vertex. Let's look at the vertex. It just simply moved over plus 2. And there's our plus 2 right there in the, in the equation. x minus 2 means we're going a positive 2, and we're shifting. The graph hasn't changed, just like the vertical translation. So this is a horizontal translation plus 2 in other words to the right and that for the time being is all the things we need to know I have one last thing to do and in this case I'm going to get rid of everything just take a look there so now we're back to the beginning and the question I have is what if I did more than one transformation at the same same time can I do that so we're going to look at one, and we're going to see if this makes perfect sense to us. Um, and in fact, yes it is. Yes you can. By the way, what's my last number? Five. So this is Y6. Y6. And I'm just going to make something up here, but we'll say, um, we'll put X minus uh, 3. Actually, let's make that a plus 3. X plus 3 squared plus... 2. So, we have two transformations happening at the same time. So in order to know what to do, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to actually do the uh, table of values first. I'm going to try to figure out just by looking at this and then shift my graph accordingly. So what I'm going to do, let me see. Um, first off, I'm going to make a copy of this table. And I'm going to change the color of this guy. So let's... Uh, Let's change the color. Um, adjust hue. I'll just change the hue a little bit so we can see the difference. There you go. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I'll get rid of these guys. I don't. I don't care about this. I just want the graph. Okay. So I'm going to shift this. So what? What do I do? What do I do? Um, let me see. Let's go back and look at these things. So I have a plus three. So remember, this is 
inside the function. So what I do know, let me see if I can just sort of figure it out. Plus three means it's horizontal because it's inside the function. It's horizontal. It is a translation because I'm adding and I'm, I'm not multiplying. So it's a translation. So in other words, uh, that's a shift. Uh, I'm moving. I'm moving the whole graph over. And it's going to be opposite sign because that's what we do with horizontals. So it's negative 3. In other words, I go negative 3 to the left. And what about this one? Plus 2. Well, that in this case is going to be a vertical translation. Now, I'm doing this pretty slow, but what you're going to find is that doing it this way is really quick. You can do these things really fast once you get used to doing it this way. So um, make sure you kind of get some practice on this, and then you're going to find that this is the best way of doing it entirely. Vertical translation, and it's plus 2. I don't change the, uh, the sign at all. And it's vertical, so it's not to the, to the right or anything. It's up. It's plus 2 up. If it was negative 2, I'd be going down. So now the question is, what does that look like? Can I, can I just simply move my graph? So I'm going to take this original graph, and I'm going, to, I'm going to just look at my vertex. My vertex is the easiest one, because it's already originally, I can see from my table of values, it's 0, 0. So all I have to do is move that. Let me see, what do I do? I go negative 3 to the left, so 1, 2, 3. I just forgot about that stuff up there. And then I'm going to go up 2, 1, Let's erase some of the stuff that I've brought along with me here. Whoops. And move you back. Sorry, guys. Look at this mess I made here. Okay. So the question is What exactly does this look like now? Did, did this just simple movement of the thing actually give me uh, the correct values for everything else? Are all these points at the exact right point? We've got to find out now.